Welcome to our second video on Hess's Law. In this video, we are going to continue with our lesson by looking at heats of formation. Standard enthalpies of formation, or heats of formation, as we will more commonly refer to them, is simply the enthalpy change when a compound is formed from its elements, where all those elements are in their standard states which basically means they're most stable forms at room temperature. We make use of these standard enthalpies of formation because they are easily found in reference tables. So rather than having to develop an equation and find its enthalpy value, these are all known enthalpy changes. The standard enthalpy of formation is a molar enthalpy and it's reference per mole of the compound formed. Let's take a look at one example here. Here's the standard molar enthalpy for nitrogen dioxide. And nitrogen dioxide consists of nitrogen atoms and oxygen atoms. So to, to write the equation for its enthalpy of formation, we just split those up, so nitrogen and oxygen, but we have to write those in their standard states. So nitrogen in its most stable form is found as N2 gas. Same with oxygen, O2 gas. We balance the equation by writing coefficients so it's reference per mole of the product. So you'll often see fractional coefficients in these equations so that the product is always set for one mole. Heats of formation are useful in Hess's law problems for the following reasons. Since all balanced chemical equations have the same number of each element on the reactant side and the product side, and heats of formation do not introduce any new elements, they only contain the elements found in the compound that's formed, the consequence is that you can always apply Hess's law by using the heats of formation for each compound in the target equation as your known equations. Let's take a look at an example of how we would set this problem up. For this example, I want to find the heat of reaction for the combustion of one mole of propane, C3H8. As always, I start off with a balanced chemical equation. When I use the heats of formation, my first step is going to write out the heat of formation equation for each substance in the balanced chemical equation. So let's do that now. Here are my heats of formation equation with their enthalpies of formation written next to them. Note that in the reference tables, you're only provided with the compound and the heat of formation. We need to figure out the products, but what I do is I simply break each compound up into its elements and then balance it on the left side so that it's balanced per one mole of the compound formed. That often involves having coefficients that are fractional, for example, with water. These heats of formation values are provided to you in standard tables. You'll note that I omitted the heat of formation for oxygen gas. And that is because by definition, the heat of formation for an element in its natural state at SATP is equal to zero. So since the enthalpy change is equal to zero, it's not going to play a role in the calculating the overall enthalpy change. So now I have three known equations and this becomes a Hess's law problem. I'm going to rearrange and manipulate these equations and show that these three equations can sum to equal my target reaction. And if I can do that, I can sum their heats of formation to find my unknown heat of reaction. Since we've already practiced Hess's law equations like this, I'll leave this example for you to determine the answer.